Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now at this point in my channel, I've released almost 330 videos. Now to me, that's a pretty big number. It's been a ton of work, but today's video, more than any other video I've done to date, is my most exciting. And the reason why it's my most exciting is because this is more than nine months in the making. Now because this video is so exciting and important to me, I'm asking you for the first time and the first time only, if you're a supporter of this channel, do me a favor and watch this entire video. It might be a little bit long, but there's a lot of great stuff in here and I am very excited to share this with you. So again, if you have some time and you can spare it, that is very important to me and I greatly appreciate your support. So if you can, hang tight until the very end. Today I reveal my very first knife design, which is sitting here in this box, unopened and ready to be revealed. Now inside this box, I have a number of knives from the company TFK. TFK is Tanev Family Knives, a couple of brothers and a family operation that make some beautiful work. In the past, I've reviewed some TFK knives and I was very, very impressed. And when I saw these blades, I knew it was a company that I wanted to work with. So for the past nine months, I've gone back and forth with the guys at TFK, worked on a design, worked on fabrication techniques and methods and how we would actually build this blade. And it is built and it is in my hands today. So I am extremely excited to open this up, take a look at it for the first time, and get this in my hands to see if it's everything I had dreamed of. So with that said, let's get into it here. Pretty pumped to actually be opening this box. Again, this has been literally nine months of hard work in the making. And keep in mind the fact that I've had this design for longer than that. So this for me has been a process that really has started with my love of knives and starting to identify what I liked and what I didn't like. And at this point, I put some uh, pen to paper and came up with an idea, presented it to this company, and they have provided me with what I think is going to be one hell of a blade. So inside here, I do have a number of blades so not only my blades but a couple other models from the company TFK nicely packaged all ready to go and if you can see here I have myself a nice large wilderness blade that I am very excited to show you now as part of this reveal I would like to show you a couple of TFK's newest blade designs apart from my own, which you will see are a couple of different styles, and I am very intrigued to take a look at these. Now this one here is actually for a friend of mine. This here is the TFK T3, which is European Standard Steel 1.2379. 1.2379 is basically D2 tool steel, which for me is an excellent steel. I very much like it. Nice squared off spine on this, a comfortable ergonomic handle, good overall weight, nicely finished, nice uh, sheath and overall package. So right away, I am very impressed at what I'm seeing. So nice addition to the TFK knife lineup. And here, this one's for me. Gonna open this bad boy up. Ooh. Now this here is the newest model. This is the T8. This is really cool. Ooh. Look at that. What a sweet blade. The TFK T8 green handle scales. This nice leather dangler with the same green stitching, which is really cool. Definitely a neat overall look. The handle scale is micarta. So some of these knives have G10. This is a micarta handle scale, reasonably sharp spine, and just a beautiful looking blade that feels great in the hand and is a really cool shape. And so now, after a full year in the making and nine months of a build, process. This is 
what I've been waiting for. Whoa. Man, this is way nicer than I would have ever thought. And here it is. Yes. But before I show you the knife, do me a favor. Stay tuned. So at this point on the channel, I've handled tons and tons of knives, specifically tons and tons of fixed blades, and I think at this point I have a pretty good understanding of what works for me and what I like. So one of the most important things in designing a knife is identifying the features in a knife that you absolutely love and the things that you need to include in your design to make it a success. You know, I'm digging the between six, seven, you know, eight inch blade size. The overall size of the knife is great. Now this 119 Arvensis is right in the sweet spot for me in that six inch blade class. It's right in that sweet spot for me, right around a six inch blade. When I find a blade that is the most appealing to me, it tends to be in that size range. The overall length of the blade is 6.5 inches with a 5.75 inch cutting edge. Overall, a great blade size for me. A knife in this blade class size in the five and a half, six inch mark is absolutely perfect. The depth of the blade works very well. I, for the most part, like plain edges on my fixed blades. All right, so first things first. I mean, what I like in a blade is I definitely like a nice choil. It does have a choil. This choil is very deep. I mean, it's great for me. I love the way it feels. Fits my hand perfectly. The choil, I always like a knife with a nice finger choil. Of course, this blade does have a finger choil, which is really ideal, and I absolutely love a blade with a finger choil. Let's use our imagination. Pretend that green tape represents a piece of the blade that I ground off. Well, doesn't that make for a damn nice drop point? I think that looks pretty sick, to be honest with you. I'm always looking for an excuse to put this in my hands. Actually, pretty well balanced. It has a reasonably heavy handle that's almost exactly evenly weighted with the front of the knife. Nice, comfortable handles. Well sculpted. That's sexy curvy. Nice little palm swell in the middle of the handle. Excellent ergonomic shape. This Longhorn Bowie has some real sweet lines. These handles are awesome. I mean, look at this, it is beautiful. I really like the overall shape and size of the scales and the amount of texture that they have on them. It does make a difference, especially if you're gonna be using it for a long time. And for me, the way the grip is on this just fills out my hand better and it feels a lot more natural. Now this blade does have a saber grind. Scallop G10 handle scales. Scalloped handle scales, very ergonomic. And just real quick, giving you a look at how this fits in my hand. Plenty of real estate on the handle. Look how long that handle is. Plenty of room to, uh, you know, choke towards the back for light chopping duties. So already you can tell, this has a really nice fine edge. Real easy to find. I love blades with a nice flat grind. It's just really easy to find that edge geometry and ride the blade right down the wood, make some feathers. Now right off the get-go, just my very first impression is that I really like this grind geometry. Some blades, when I first try them on wood, I cannot find that edge, but this to me is exactly where it should be. I mean, right off the get-go, my first impression is just how this feels in my hand is super comfy. I love the way this feels. I love this size of a blade, and I'm definitely comfortable with the edge geometry from the very first second I picked this up and right off the get-go feels pretty nice in terms of the geometry of the blade the way it splits the wood apart beautiful choice in terms of these blade finishes especially on this protector I think that is a gorgeous finish unbelievable finish I absolutely love the finish on this d2 tool steel knife this thing is sick I love d2 tool steel I have always been a fan 
I find as though it's a perfect middle ground between stainless properties, carbon steel properties, the ability to get a good sharp razor's edge, decent in terms of the overall edge retention, and for me, it's a, it's a steel that I've just had really good luck with. I love D2 tool steel. This is D2 tool steel, and I very much like it. It holds a great edge, it's very easy to sharpen, and I do like it quite a bit. D2 tool steel, nicely made, really durable, heavy duty blades. In D2 tool steel, gives you an excellent durable blade that's not only reasonably strong, but also has some rust resistant characteristics. The D2 tool steel holds a wonderful edge, even after all of this hard use. In my opinion, this blade is excellent for overall outdoor and field use. You get the benefit of the carbon steel being nice and strong, durable, having an excellent edge. The heat treat on these blades was wonderfully done. And then beyond that, just having the overall stainless qualities, a blade that will not rust. This is going to be for you an excellent option for wet weather conditions overall. And you also pay close attention to the things that you hate about knives. The things that drive you crazy. The little ergonomics and the things that just hurt your hands and just simply don't work. You make sure at all costs you stay clear away from those features. The very first second I put this in my hands, I knew I was in trouble. It's just the fit in my hands. I mean, I'm really struggling with this. I don't think this is going to do it for me. I don't think it fits my style. I don't think it fits what I'm looking to do. And at least I understand it. So what is it about this knife that has me so disappointed? Unfortunately, it's the handle. This blade has a little bit of a balance problem for me. It's very forward blade heavy. It's not very centrally balanced. The Topps Tex Creek XL does not have a choil. And I really think that if it had a choil, that would make a big difference for me in the overall comfort. Now I'm running out of real estate on the back of the knife. This has a little bit of a thin handle for me. So that what it ends up kind of doing is just spreading my hands out more than I'd like. I, I definitely don't necessarily like you know how deep a difference there is in the handle there. I found that you know, it is a little bit bothersome. Now what I can tell you for certain is even cutting through that little two inch log, this definitely has a hot spot right on this hook. Definitely had a hot spot on that hook right on my finger. Place that it really bothers me is that this hook in the back really does crush my pinky. My pinky here is just seriously taking some abuse. And it's a knife that I've never been really truly comfortable with. If you look at how short this overall handle is in the chopping position, I can't really fit my hand in here. That blade is completely bent over. Hard to say, I think it might have just the slightest bend to it to the right here. I think Maxpedition messed up just a little bit. If you look at the top profile of the knife, it really necks down quite a bit towards the end of the knife. For me, that really leaves you kind of lacking. And the one thing that bothers me the most is this upper thumb guard. But when I use that choil, basically I end up with a little bit of a hot spot where this upper finger guard pushes into the meat of my thumb right there. My biggest critique is the fact that it does have the upper guard, which hurts your hand while you're doing slicing tasks. So after fully evaluating all of my blades and all the things that I liked and didn't like, I turned to a company that I had grown to greatly enjoy. Some blades with beautiful ergonomics, overall excellent qualities, excellent finish, and just beautiful craftsmanship. And in that regard, I turn to TFK, Tanev Family Knives. Let me introduce you to TFK, Tanev Family Knives. The minute that I saw their work, I was instantaneously drawn to it. There are a number of features that are really presenting themselves to me in a way that shows me this is a company with a high attention to detail. I have recently reviewed two knives from a company TFK. Now with that review, I was extremely impressed at these blades. The grind angle on this T7 is beautiful. This blade performs extremely well in terms of getting nice fine curls from the top of this log all the way to the bottom. Just absolutely some of the best qualities you could ask for in a blade. I feel as though these knives are made up of some of the best qualities and features 
that you get out of all of these other blades. TFK seems to do a really nice job refining their edge. That's what I found on all their blades so far is that they have a very nicely refined edge so it is quite sharp right out of the box. I do prefer D2 in general so I think they were wise to start with D2 tool steel. It's performed extremely well so far in all my tests amongst all of their models. Now in general this T7 performed very well for the batoning tasks. Splitting down through the wood with ease. Did a nice job splitting the wood right in half. Let's try that again. Let's uh, let me hammer on this tip a little bit and that'll be another good indication of the quality of the heat treat. I mean hammering right down through there. No problem at all. Now another one of the features that attracted me heavily to the TFK knives was their leather work. This pouch dangler sheath is gorgeous, very nicely made, and just a beautiful design. So I'm a very big fan of this pouch dangler sheath. I think they did a beautiful job. The work that they've done on their edges and polishing the edge and getting it really, really sharp out of the box, they have done an excellent job. So having these in my hands, I'm like, wow, these guys really know how to finish their blades and really pull off a beautiful looking product. They have the tools in the box to give you a nice high-end blade. And for TFK, nice job, guys. Keep up the great work. So after talking with the guys at Tanev Family Knives, I decided to upscale one of their handle styles to give my blade the overall TFK look and feel while still maintaining my own design elements. TFK went to work very quickly, creating detailed CAD plants and 3D renderings. With the 3D renderings, we were able to take a closer look at the blade to make sure it had the absolute look and feel that we were going for. These 3D renderings were very detailed and had a lifelike look, allowing us to carefully identify any potential features that we wanted to change. After looking through these drawings and deciding we were good to go, TFK worked on sourcing all the materials. We discussed all the material choices, from the blade stock to the thickness, the handle scales, everything from whether or not they'd be glued, pinned, or would use hardware to bolt them on. Once we had all of our design elements worked out, TFK worked very hard to get this blade built. Here you'll see them planing down the blade stock, getting it to the proper thickness. The bulk of the rough shape was done with a CNC milling machine. Here you see the machine going hard to work, carefully cutting and scribing out the shape of the knife. details were evaluated, such as the overall balance of the blade. This allowed us to make some determinations as to how much handle should be removed in order to create a skeletonized handle to appropriately balance the blade at the fulcrum point up close tight to the finger guard. Although there were many steps that were machine finished, there was a significant amount of handwork too. 
This blade is along the lines of many of the mid-tech knives you've come to know. Here you see the handle scales being rough fit. The scales were 3D contoured and machined to fit perfectly. The blade stock was acid etched by hand. Here you'll see the final finish being rubbed on and carefully smoothed out to be a nice even finish. Careful preparations were made to ensure that the stone washed finish came out absolutely perfect. And here you see the knife with its final finish just prior to doing all the laser etching and final assembly. After the tumbling process, a nice sharp refined edge was placed on the blade to make sure it had the perfect finish and was ready for action. Here you see the laser etching machine doing the final touches on the logos and getting this blade prepared for final assembly. I received two prototypes. One of them had a standard square spine, and the other was ground to a perfect 90 degree finish. Here you see that finish work on the second blade, making sure that stock was nice and sharp, capable of striking a ferro rod and doing some scraping tasks. Which one would you prefer, an acid stone wash finish or a shiny squared off spine capable of showering some sparks. TFK does a wonderful job on their leather work. Here you'll see the leather being prepared for dyeing and fabrication. and a nice smooth application of that jet black dye. Absolutely perfectly finished on the sheath, giving it a nice high quality final look. And then adding the toxic green stitching and making it pop. And after an amazing long process, here you see the final product ready to go. Fully fabricated and assembled, packaged up and ready for some testing and hard use. The Tanev Family Knives TFK T17 Outer Limitless Design is now complete and I think it looks absolutely great. So here's a big thanks to the people at TFK for their hard work and dedication to get this project done. I'm absolutely proud to have teamed up with those guys and they are totally amazing at what they do. I can't recommend their work enough. Please support Tana Family Knives. And so now after you've seen all the thought that's gone into this, all the process behind the scenes, what it took to build this knife, and why I chose to work with this company, here for the first time I am actually going to look at my own knife and design it just makes me nervous but after all the nerves getting it in my hand my heart is actually pounding that feels sweet just hoping it's going to have the ergonomics that I believed it would have and the way it would feel in my hands 
and take a look at this. A nice large slab of D2 tool steel. This is that 1.2379 standard, so European D2 tool steel with a beautiful acid stone wash finish. These G10 handle scales which have been nicely contoured and machined. A beautiful toxic green liner just popping off the back. A beautiful leather dangler sheath with the same toxic green stitching. A wonderful package overall just beautifully done. And my impressions is, wow, this is just a very nice quality feeling blade. The ergonomics, just where I had hoped they'd be. It's strange holding my own blade. Um, <laughs> I'm like nervous and just in awe all at the same time. To be honest with you, it is going to take me some time to get this all to settle in. The fact that I've been working on this for so long, the fact that Tanev Family Knives has been working on this so long. Um, it's hard to show the excitement here. Um, I am like very much itching to get this out into the field and try it, but I have so many things that I need to do. I just know how big this is. I need to photograph it. I need to put together marketing pamphlets. If this tests the way I hope it will, this is going to be the start of a Kickstarter campaign. And with that, I have a ton of work to do, a lot of testing. I have to fully test this blade to make sure it's going to perform the way I need it to, keeping in mind this is a prototype. So there may be some additional work to come. Um, First initial impression, feels great in the hand. The handle indexes the exact way I had hoped it would. You will notice that this has an extra long handle by design for balance and for chopping purposes. The finger choil, if you know me and you've seen this video, you know I like a finger choil perfectly placed. The indexing and the finger guard feels good in the hand. Nice and wieldy, good overall blade depth. I cannot wait to test this grind angle. I hope it's what I believe it would be, but to have this in my hands, I'm actually, to be honest with you, in complete shock. Um, just an amazing, amazing experience, amazing to go through this process, and I am totally pumped to have this in my hands. So, all right, guys, there you have it. A quick look and reveal of my Tana Family Knives TFK T17 Wilderness and Survival Blade. So I hope this is the start of something really great. I am extremely excited to have this in my hands. To actually be at this point, like I said, I'm kind of in shock. I'm sitting here holding my own knife. It's like all sinking in all at once, and I am totally pumped about this. Um, I have just so much to do, so many things I need to get going on, but to have this here today is a huge, huge step forward. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.